If the only thing that you do as a Christian is come to a celebration service on a Sunday morning, then you are not part of the church. Acts 2.42, the Bible says that the believers had all things in common. They live in Acts chapter number 2. They live one with another. And so this is what relationships is about. Relationships is where we have home self. It's where we have youth. It's where we have the prayer groups that we pray. It's where we have the amen. It's where we have the first ladies. It's where we have kingdom man. It's where we have kingdom man. It's where we love one with another. It's where we have fellowship. It's, it's the four pillars of the church. It's fellowship. It's communion. It's breaking of bread. And it's prayers. It's the four pillars of the church. This is where relationship happens. Re church happens in that context. Not on a Sunday morning. And then the last one which we're trusting the Lord for to do very well in this season is earnings. Because here's the reality, right? The vision that pastor has, tithes and offerings, is not going to pay for it. The, the, the vision that pastor has in his heart, our tithes and offerings is never going to pay for it. What is the vision? Thank you for asking. It's a very good question. Let me tell you what pastor's, what's in pastor's heart. Pastor wants a facility that's a campus. That's Acres and acres big, where a church is built on there, but a school is also built on there. But there's also an old age home. But there's also a retirement village, so that when you come to the end of your life, and you don't have enough money put away for you to look after yourself in old age, that you can come and live on the church premises, and there's doctors, and there's nurses there. This is the vision that's in pastor's heart. Now, tithes and offerings is not going to do that for us. And so we need to trust God for a blueprint that God will give us of how we can earn an income from the church outside of tithes and offerings. Must we give offerings? Of course. Must we give to the church? Yes, we are instructed to do so. But we got to go to the next level. And so this is what the earnings component is. We are believing God to raise up people in this household that says, Pastor, I am coming here because God has placed me here to generate money to finance this kingdom vision. That's what the earnings is about. And so those are the four elements. And so we have been exploring all of that through the last couple of weeks. And this morning we only have one presentation. And so I'm going to call on Adrian to come now and to do his presentation. Amen. So we give him a hand as he comes. Good morning, congregation. Good morning to the angel in the house and the angel over the house, to the house leadership, and to every fivefold minister. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. All right, so we are here to speak about the vision of the youth ministry. So, our vision is partnered with the church's mission. Our vision is to raise up this generation and the ones coming to complete their works of destiny. Now, there are two focuses that we want to focus on and have been focusing on. It is the worship and the word element. Now, you will see on the screen, there's a plus works. So we know that we've been taught about worship in church. So our aim is to, once we teach them about worship, the FOSO elements, faith, obedience, and sacrifice, and the outcome of those things, then Hebrews 13, verse 16, where God speaks about the sacrifices, um, the ones he's pleased with. So it's, it's first the sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise, and then the one that God is pleased with, where we communicate and do good. So once they understand the worship, the works will come with it. So that's our aim. And so we believe we form under commission in the core. And then under commission, we also have relationships. You will see how it, how it filters now. And you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So there are four processes or events that we would like to focus on this year. It's Youth Fridays, which we have every Friday. And then what we would like to introduce again is Youth Cells. Then number three, a youth worship team or band. And number four, a youth camp. I know the youth is going to be excited about that one. <laughs> right, so ideally, ideally, what's the age group for a Friday night? We would like the age of 13 to 21. I say ideally because 
at this stage we do have older folk. And that is only because we don't want to lose the group that maybe have finished school. And so until the, the next chapter comes in our house, which I know it will be spoken about soon, we want to keep them because we want to also raise them up to be leaders. So Pastor AP has now not... <laughs> so what's the purpose of a Friday night? Pastor AP has so beautifully put it already. Our purpose is to fellowship. And Pastor AP has already mentioned Acts 2 verse 42. So thank you. I don't have to go through that part. <laughs> but the Greek word, if you want to know, it's called koinonia. Koinonia. It means to participate or share something in common. So we, we all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We all love God. We all serve Him. So that's one thing we have in common. So like Pastor already mentioned, there's four ways we do those things. So I'm not going to still go there. How does it look on a Friday night? So... Obviously, we have programs centered around what we're going to speak about or what the vision is. So for now, it's worship and word. So we've been doing programs around worship and word. But it's based on what is being preached in the church. So I, I'm pretty sure if I had called some of them up now, they would come and explain. Maybe we should do that one time. They can come explain what we do on a Friday. Also, we, we do some activities on a Friday night uh, to garner some social interaction and fun. We spend some time in fellowship with the Lord. It can happen with regards to icebreakers, games, slim nose, um, or like Friday where we uh, create our own pizza. And it was beautiful where we create our own pizza, but there's always a lesson um, tied to it. Um, and so ultimately we want to prepare them to be leaders in ministry, in the house, but also in the spheres that they act outside. So when they get to university, we want them to be student leaders. We want them to be RCL leaders. We want them to be prefix because they need to function in that spaces. And so Friday nights is very important because that is where the bulk of it comes. And it will filter, around, filter down through point two. And so we use the scripture, 1 Timothy, verse 2, verse 12, which uh, we want the young people to take note of, which says the following. Let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Right, next point. Thank you. So, then we would like to introduce youth cell. So, we know what home cells are. Now, this is youth cell. So, the purpose is to build relationships, and that's where relationship in the core element comes in. Outside of a Friday night. So if a Friday night has programs, we don't have really a lot of time. So if you do all the math, I'm not going to do all the math, but we only see them two hours every Friday. That's not enough. And so we need to build relationships with them outside of a Friday. And so it's also an opportunity to invite other people where they can also interact with, which will also fall under commission. So there's three areas that we've identified in our youth specifically where we can have homes, um, youth cells so far. It is the Mitchell's Plain area, the Southern Zone or Falls Bay. Then we have the Athlone Oederfeld area, which is central. And then we have Belleville, which is the Northern Zone. So we, all our, our youth comes from those three areas mainly. So the aim is to have our youth leadership be leaders of the home cell or the youth cell. And then as we grow, the ones coming to youth will also then start their leadership journey in a youth cell. So we are looking to start once a month for now, and we will start on the 9th of April. It's on a Tuesday. And then following that, every first Tuesday of every month. So if we look following that, we will have nine youth cells for the year currently. We, it might increase or it might not, but that's what we have for now. Right. Then we have our youth worship team and slash band. The purpose for this is to, we aim to create the space for talents and gifts to be nurtured more consistently. So what we have done already, previously we have started the youth worship team. So we have already started. So we already one up for that. But now we need to create the space for them to practice more or have more. Like I know last week, um, Minister Trevino said that they want to start proclaiming arts and have the younger ones also. So we want to partner with it. We want to come alongside you and have the space for you. So if you want to 
use a Friday or then we can do it together because we have the same mission there. Um, so obviously, if in terms of singers and band, it's ultimately to integrate them into EKC worship. So we don't have to go fetch people from outside. And then last but not least, this one will be very quick. So we will have a youth camp. And um, obviously it will be to fellowship with the youth outside of a Friday. But we, we will still speak about this point further. So the logistics are not sorted yet. All we know is we have a date. It is the 19th to the 21st of July during the school holidays. I know Shanae will be happy about that. Um, and June, sorry, sorry, June. And during the school holidays, my dates were mixed up. Um, I'm now with Pastor. We're not by questions yet. Um, there will be a focus program, but the logistics, we will let you know when we, as a leadership, have um, speak more at the moment. Non Tobacco and Uncle Deacon Donovan Moise are busy finding us a venue. Then we will be able to tell you all the pricings. Um, thank you very much. Yes, and we yes, can we ask, uh, beloved, questions, not proposals. Proposals can be had offline. You're welcome to speak to any of the leaders that presented any of the weeks. If you have any proposals for any of the departments, please speak to the leaders. You've seen who they are. Uh, we're going to take questions. Clayton, Pastor D in front. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've got legitimate questions, Pastor. Yes, I've got three questions, but I'll start off with this. Well done on the presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, my first question is, how many, how many um, youth do you have? That's a question. Do I answer it now? Yes, you must. Okay, we have about 20 to 25 youth, young people now. I will sponsor for four lighties for that youth camp. Can I see a raise of hands who will sponsor a lighty? There's one. We'll do, two, we'll do two three, also. There's four, there's five, there's six, there's seven, there's eight. There's, there's, there's more than, you see how Mr. quickly it works? Clayton, just take notes, please. Of, can yeah, anybody just keep their hands up? Who said so that they I've got four. Sponsor? There's just two, there's six. keep your hands up so that we can have it. Just keep those hands. And, and then I have a big problem, man. While they're collecting the names, I've got a very big problem. So I cut for May 8, so I cut for Sissel 8, so I cut for Virgil 8, so I cut for Trevino 8. Us is all over 21, my bro. So you want to cut off the AIDS at 21 and then perhaps uh, progress to a, a young adult? Or wh what's the thoughts there? That's actually my question. So that is the thinking. Um, I know I will, I will allow Pastor AP to speak on the young adults, but I didn't want to go over into the young adults because I know they, have, they will prepare something at the later stage. But the reason why, because the age gaps is too big. Already 13 and 21 is a very big gap. So... As we know, when we grow in the world, we know there's no baby, Holy Ghost. But as we grow in the world, there's levels to these things. So I think for now, that is the age we've identified. We can change it if there's a better alternative. How many, how many houses do you need for those home cells, you said? So the way the, way the structure will work, so we will choose leaders in, within the youth leadership. So for example, if Jared is the leader of Mitchell's Plain area, he will then sort out which house they will go to of the youth that goes in the Mitchell's Plain area. But, but you don't have a resource called house yet? No, not okay. yet. So my house is available for Belleville. Any other takers? Prudence's house is available. Uh, uh, Terrence's house is mass <laughs> available. <laughs> I'm not, but I, I'm part of, yes, I'm very much part of the youth. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Langley is part of the youth, praise the Lord. So there you've got five houses, Pastor Alfonso. You have five houses available. Thank you so much. Can I maybe just say one thing before, if there's any other questions? I think there's, there's one thing we really need. Um, we need the buy-in and the input of all the parents. So, for example, on a Friday night, if you drop your, your kids, you can come fetch them also. Sometimes we, ra we run out of transport. So we have, we have to make a lot of lifts up and down. So we, 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 oh yes, and send them every Friday. We are there every Friday. We are there every Friday. Um, I know Adasa loves youth. She, she didn't want the pizza thing to happen. She wanted to be in youth. 
And so send them. I promise you they'll be better for it. Are we taking questions still? I think your presentation was so good, Adrian. There's no questions for you. <laughs> Is there anybody with questions? No. Wonderful. We're going to call the worship team to come just to lead us in worship. Yes. Amen. Shall we stand as we prepare our hearts? Yes, pastor is saying we want to help. And so, again, my, my, my request is anybody that wants to help, any of the departments, but specifically the youth, because it's our next generation, we must help them. You are welcome to speak to Adrian. But any of the other departments, if you have proposals or anything, you're welcome to speak to any of the leaders. That's an open door policy. Take your proposals to them. Doesn't mean your proposal is going to be accepted, but you can have the conversation. Amen. Yes. Just ask your neighbor, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. I'm a testament of it. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Come on. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Amen. So just one more time, you know, we've heard the testimony of Uncle Pat and we give thanks to God Amen. for the wonderful works. Amen. But just ask your neighbor again, is there anything too hard for the Lord? So the song we're singing is Kuying Zek. Simply means that all things are possible through God by faith. Amen? Amen. So you might not understand. But just uh, open your ears in faith. Amen? Oh. Come on, we go. Is there anything too hard for is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too difficult for Him? Is there anything too difficult for Him? I'm going to sing it again. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too difficult for Him? Is there anything it's difficult for you. Oh, 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 too hard for the Lord. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Yeah, is there anything too difficult for Him? Is there anything too difficult for Him? Yeah, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Yeah. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Hey, is there anything too difficult for Him? See you. 
said, all things are possible. 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 Possible. All things are possible. Said, all things are possible. Possible. All things are 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 possible.
this morning Father the blind now will see the deaf now will hear the lame now will be will walk the dead shall be raised we stand on your word yes that all things are possible not just some things all things are possible not just a few things, all things are possible. We stand on your word this morning, oh God, that you are the God of the impossible. In this church, Uncle Pat will come out of the hospital. Yes. Yeah, Uncle Pat will come out of the hospital. Yes. Healed, whole, fully restored. Yes. We stand on your word. Yes. Auntie Nan will come out of hospital. Yes. Healed, whole, restored. We stand on your word. Signs, wonders, and miracles yes. will be our portion. Yes. We stand on your word. This house shall be known as a house that walks in the impossible. We stand on your word. The blind now will see. There shall be raised if we believe. Stand on his word. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. This is the declaration of our faith this morning, Father, that nothing is impossible with you. We serve the God that makes the impossible possible. And so we receive now breakthroughs. We receive now healings. We receive now miracles. We receive now restoration. We receive now deliverance. We receive now salvation. Nothing is impossible. We receive now in this atmosphere. We receive the impossible things. We receive the open door. We receive favor, we receive providence, we receive provision, we receive under this atmosphere, under the open door. We receive those impossible things. Situations change, circumstances change, things have turned around, the storm has stopped, the lack now experiences overflow. All things have changed in this atmosphere, change and turn around has come. We receive from the hand of the Lord, change and turn around, change and and turn around, change and turn around, change and turn around. We receive it now, Father. We receive it now, Father. We 
thank you that we know that the flower fades and the grass withers but the word of the Lord shall stand forever and so we say now preach Holy Ghost teach Holy Ghost manifest Holy Ghost in Jesus name Amen I five someone as you sit tell them all things are possible all things are possible all things are possible there's nothing too hard for the Lord there's nothing too difficult for him all things are possible if we believe we stand on his word amen his word and his promises to us in Christ Jesus is yes and amen God has a yes for you the bank may have said no but God has a yes the doctor may have said no but God has a yes uh, come on somebody may have said no to your promotion but we know that promotion coming from the Lord God has a yes all of God's promises in Christ Jesus to you are yes and amen. God has a yes. You need to get a yes. Don't accept the no. Even when they say no, know that God has a yes. It might be no for this one because God has a better one in store. It might have been no for the one that you've been asking for. But maybe you ask the miss. If you ask right, the yes will come because God has a yes for you. There's a yes in God for you. Yes to your own house. Yes to your own business. Yes to your children saved. Yes to your family restored. Yes to you walking in the miraculous. Yes to you walking in the supernatural. Yes to our own building. Yes to our own building. For our church, yes to our own building. God has a yes for you. God has a yes. There's a yes in God for you. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what you are looking for, but I've come to say to someone this morning that God has a yes for you. Yes to getting married. Yes to being healed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel that thing. Yes to getting married. Yes to being healed. Yes to being restored. Yes to seeing your children again. Yes, God has a yes for you. God has a someone on the side. God has a yes for you. Yes to your promotion. Yes to your increase. Yes to your children are flourishing in the education. God has a yes for you. All of God's promises. All of God's promises. All of God's promises. Not just some of his promises. Not just a few promises. All of God's promises in Christ Jesus to us is yes and amen. The word amen means it will be so. The word amen means it must be so. The word amen means it shall be so. Whatever you say yes to, it will be so. Whatever you say yes to, it shall be so. Whatever you say yes to, it must be so. Maybe some of you need to get a yes and an amen in your heart. It's not enough for you just to have a yes. You need to add an amen to your yes. Woo! Some of you have been saying amen to some of the wrong things. Uh, you, you, some of you have been saying amen to some of the wrong things. The prophet of Nima has said, "Yes, vaya, that's amen." Let us say it's what the in line is with the word of God. Then you say, "Yeah, as look out sooner." That's an amen because amen means it must be so, it shall be so, it is so. So you need to get a different amen in your heart. Maybe you need to say amen to I am blessed. I am always on top. I am never beneath. I am the head and not the tail. I have all things in all sufficiency by Christ Jesus. My God is able to supply all of my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I have a heads of protection all around me. God gives His angels charge concerning me. No unclean devil 
shall come nigh unto my dwelling because the Lord protects me. I walk under a cloud of fire by night and the glory of God by day. I have got angels all around me, surrounding me each and every single day because God is for me. Many of they that rise up against me, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. I don't know about you, but he is a shield for me. God is my shield. God is my fortress. I have a present help in time of... God is my fortress. God is my shield. I have a present help in time of need. I have a yes in my heart. I have a yes. But I also have an amen. I have a yes, but I also have an amen. I have a yes, but I also have an amen. I have a yes, but I also have an amen. Some of you need to get your amen back. You're giving your amen to the devil. Maybe you need to start giving your amen to God. Agree with God. Say, yes, God, amen. Everything you have spoken, it will be so. Everything that you have spoken, it shall be so. Everything that you have spoken, it must be so. I'm saying amen to you, Lord. I'm saying amen to you. Amen to your promises. Amen to the promises of God. I'm saying amen to the promises of God. Amen. Ik zeg amen voor die here van morgen. Ik zeg amen aan die beloftes van die here. Ik zeg amen voor jouw belofte wat die here voor mij heeft en zijn woorden. Maak je zaak wie wat gezegd die die here heeft het beloven. Die Bijbel zegt hij is een waarmaker van zijn woord. Dat God is niet zoals die mensen kunt wat niet niet. Als hij iets gezegd zal hij dat niet doen. Als hij het gesprekt zal hij dat niet volbrengen. Ik heb de amen en mij. Als je dit gesprek het, zal je dit dan niet doen nie. As die Heere dit so gesê het, sal jy dit dan nie volbring nie. Ons moet die Heere glo weer. Ons glo wat allemaal sê, maar ons glo nie wat die Heere sê. Wat die Heere sê, dan glo net in my woord. Jesus sê, glo in my. Ek ga na my vaderse woning om een plek vir jou voor te berei. As dit nie so was nie, so ek het nie vir jou gesê het nie. Maar kyk nou, en my vader, so huis, as a baie wonings. Dit is wat ons noem in Engels in oxymoron. Das wonings in a huis. O, die Heere Jabels van Mora. Das wonings in a huis. So wat hy wil probeer, sê dit vir jou en vir my, is dat, en die vader, is dat plek vir jou. Daar is plek vir jou, en die vader. Jy mag miskien vir dag voel, dat jy behoort nie, maar in die vaderse huis, is dat plek vir jou. Iemand mag jou te leer gestel het, maar ek sê vir jou vanmorgen, in die vaderse huis, is dat plek vir jou. Iemand mag miskien vir jou, te nagekom het en jy voel verdruk van morgen maar in die vaderse huis is daar plek vir jou you might have come into this place this morning disappointed but in the father's house there is room for you thank you sir you might have come into this place this morning rejected but in the father's house there is room for you you might have come into this place this morning despondent, but in the Father's house, there is room for you. You might have come into this place this morning suicidal because you feel lonely, but in the Father's house, there is room for you. Though many has come, there is still room for one. Because in the Father's house, there is room for you. Though many have come, daar mag al duisende gekom het al, maar daar is nog altijd plek vir jou. Daar mag al honderde duisende gekom het, maar daar is nog altijd plek vir jou. In the Father's house, there is room for you. There is room for you. There is room for you. 
this room for you. This room for you. He doesn't ask you what mistake did you do yes did you make yesterday? He says, No, there's room for you. He doesn't ask you what amount of guilt do you carry. No, there's room for you. He doesn't ask you, are you walking in shame? No, he says there's room for you. In spite of your guilt. In spite of your shame, in spite of your sin, there's room for you. In the Father's house, there's room for you. In the Father's house, there's room for you. In spite of your rejection, there's room for you. In spite of your disappointment, there's room for you. In spite of the pain that you've experienced, there's room for you. Somebody may have hurt you, but the Father says to you this morning, you can still come to me. I have room for you. I am the mender of the broken heart and your heart might be broken this morning because someone has struck you someone has disappointed you someone that you relied on has broken your trust and so you cannot trust anymore so you cannot forgive anymore but in the father's house there's room for you he says you don't have to walk in unforgiveness you don't have to walk in disappointment you don't have to walk in bitterness you don't have to walk in rejection in my house there is room for you I don't know who I'm talking to this morning I haven't prepared to speak to you in this manner but I sense the Holy Ghost this morning that there's room there's for you for someone you. may have disappointed you just hang on just hang on just hang on someone may have disappointed you man God I feel this thing someone may have disappointed you the Bible says that there was a gentleman in the in the place called Lodibar one of was it King was it King David's sons not King David King Saul's sons Jonathan's son had a son and the son was trapped at a very young age and the son became lame. Now when you are a king's son, you have a right to sit at the table and feast and eat of the best. But the son found himself in a place called Lodibar. Lodibar was a place where there's no glory. Lodibar was a place where there was no provision. Lodibar was a place where there was a lack. Lodibar was a place of disappointment. Lodibar was a place of rejection. Lodibar was a place of being dropped. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but someone may have dropped you and now you find yourself in Lodibar because you thought only if the marriage will work out, I will get to where I'm supposed to go to, but then the marriage never worked out. You thought only if I get this job and this job is going to change my situation, but then the job never changed change your situation you thought only if I stay in this relationship then God is going to turn things around for me but the more you stayed the more I, the worse it became because you were in Lodibar I've got news for you that the books of God is being opened this morning and they were saying is there someone of the lineage of Jonathan whom I may do good to today I wonder if there's someone of the lineage of the father who needs good to be done to them this morning in spite of where you were dropped in spite of where you were disappointed in spite of where you were hurt there's room for you at the father this morning you don't have to stay in Lodibar you don't have to stay in the place of pain did you hear that? you don't have to stay in the place of pain You don't have to stay in the place of pain. Many people stay in the place of pain. Carrying pain for 20 years. Carrying pain for 30 years. Staying in Lodibar because someone has dropped you. You are in a place of pain. But I hear the father this morning saying, this room for you this morning. This is the Father's house. I want to, for a moment, invite you to come. I know, Pastor, we didn't plan this. I'm supposed to finish the sermon, but I, I, I sense the Lord this morning. This is a morning for your restoration. This is a morning for your restoration. Things, things have changed. Hear me good. Not things are about to change. Things have changed. I want you, if you can identify with what I've said this morning, I want you to make your way down from your seat. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus that as you make your way down from your seat, 
that change and turn around comes upon your life that healing comes upon your life that restoration comes upon your life that forgiveness comes upon your life that brokenness leaves you that disappointment leaves you that rejection leaves you ah that pain that place of lonely bar that lack of glory leaves you this morning things are changing for you this morning things are changing for you this morning things are changing for you this morning morning there's room for you this morning there's room for you this morning and while you are standing in front just give it to the Lord just give that thing to the Lord this morning we're going to pray for you in a moment we're going to lay hands on you we're going to impart that grace over your life this morning for breakthrough for turn around but just give it to the Lord Father's house, there's room in for you. My father's house, there's room in my father's for house, there's room for you. In my father's house, there's room for you. In my father's house, there's room for you. In my father's house, there's room for you. Can we get some deacons, deacons, wives, Dr. Goth? In my father's house, Mr. Langley. Come pray for the beloved, bring your wife. Come pray. We need to lay hands. This is a day of days. This is a day of days for you. Your life will never be the same again. Every limitation over your life is broken this morning. Every ungodly boundary that has been set around your life is removed by the word of the Lord this morning. Breakthrough is waiting. Breakthrough is waiting. Waiting. Healing is waiting. Healing is waiting. 
waiting. Healing is waiting. Healing is waiting. Healing is waiting. Healing is waiting. And it's calling your name. And it's calling your name. Healing is waiting. Healing is waiting. Healing is waiting. Thank you. 